Hey everyone, and welcome to Monday Night Team Call. I'm Emily Granat, Emerald Ambassador, and I'm joined with Jamie Haskin, Diamond Ambassador. And we are gonna be call, or talking about cold market recruiting and recruiting business builders specifically. Um, and we're gonna come at this from a couple of different ways. We're gonna give you a bunch of tangible, like step-by-step -step things, um, things that you can put into action right away. But first, we're going to attack why we aren't already doing those things. So I think we can all agree that with Google, with the team page, with all the videos on YouTube, with all the training you know, that we have access to at our fingertips, there really is no excuses why we can't become masters at the skill because it's all right. Just like anything else, you can become a master of it and you be can become a great cold market recruiter and a great um, person for attracting business builders. Uh, um, but what holds us back? So that's what I wanna talk about first. Um, when I first started in my business, one of the things that I got started doing right away is um, writing affirmations. And one of the things that I remember writing down every single day over and over and over is I attract strong leaders to my team. And the reason I said I attract strong business builder or leaders to my team is because I wanted to attract them. I didn't write down, I find strong business um, or strong leaders for my team. I wrote, I attract them. And the reason why is because that helped me change my behavior to become someone who would attract those people. Um, it, it, has to, it has to do with the reticular activating system in your brain. So this is the way that God designed our brains to work with the reticular activating system. And it's actually really, really cool. So um, the reticular activating system is the attention center of the brain. It's like turning on the lights to your brain. So it's basically um, using your conscious thoughts to direct your subconscious thoughts. It's the same thing that happens like when you are uh, um, in the market to buy a car and you want, say you want a red Mustang. Well, pretty soon you're gonna start seeing red Mustangs everywhere. They were always there. There was always the same amount of red Mustangs, but because you're looking for it and because it's a goal that you have, your brain is going to seek those things out. So it's the same thing that's happening with your business. And that's why I wrote those things down. I wanted to attract strong leaders to my team. Um, and so that helped me to um, basically hone in on what I was looking for. And once my brain knew what I was looking for, then I could go after it, okay? So that's why it's so important to not only write down your goals, but write down specifics of what you want to attract, first of all. Um, and there's lots of, lots of things that go into it. Part of it is your belief. Okay, and I wanted to tell you guys the story of the two wolves. There's two wolves fighting each other. One wolf represents disbelief and doubt and um, scarcity, things like that. And the other one represents confidence and leadership and belief. Um, and you might be wondering, well, which wolf wins? <laughs> They're fighting to the death over here. And it's whatever wolf that you feed the most. So if you can feed those, that belief, if you can um, really hone in on what you want, then you're going to feed the wolf that you want to, want to win. Um, I think that's a powerful analogy because it's your choice what you feed. Um, I work with people all the time who have doubts and fears and things with their business, and I've had them too, and I've had to really be intentional about working on them. But some of the things I hear people say um, or is I can't get anybody to talk to me. I don't have engagement on my posts. People ignore my messages. It's crickets. Um, I'm not good at coming up with things to write or post. Um, but you can replace those thoughts and you can replace though that, that mindset with um, positive things that you want to actually be true about your business. Um, because one of the neat things about the reticular activating system is that it doesn't differentiate between synthetic reality and actual reality. So if you write down and talk about and think about things that you want to be a reality, 
they will become your reality as you begin to change your mindset. So things you can replace those um, things that you're saying with is I'm sifting through people to find the right people to join my team. Um, I'm learning how to write more engaging posts. I'm making connections with people who I want to join my team. You know, you can write and say those things that you want to be true about your business um, and you're going to find ways mentally to prove that that is true once you start doing that. Um, that is so good. It I, itself I want you guys to hear that and really take time to reflect on that and, and truly imagine that as two versions of yourself or those two wolves. Imagine those things and what you feed is going to grow, right? So if you are, those two examples are so powerful, like Emily said. So if you are feeding those doubts about yourself, if you are feeding those, those things you're telling yourself, even though some of it might be true, you might not be having a business builder right now. You might struggle finding something to post. It doesn't necessarily mean it's not true, but do you want that to be your truth? Do you want that to be your future? Do you want that to be where it stops and what continues? Do you, that's what you're going to feed if you keep telling yourself those things, right? So think about those things. And when you have those thoughts, stop yourself in, the, in your tracks and think about what you need to change that to and write it down immediately because that's not easy. You're going to revert back to those same thoughts and you're going to keep reverting back to what is comfortable and normal for you. So if you want that to change, you need, that comes from you and you alone. So write that down, write down the opposite. And if, even if you don't feel like it's true at the time, like Emily was saying, your brain doesn't know the difference between what is reality and what maybe isn't quite real reality yet. If you're just telling yourself your new truths, tell yourself what is going to be your new truth. And that is what you're going to feed, right? So keep going, Emily. Just wanted to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> No, that is exactly true. And you guys want to know the funny thing is when I first started writing these things, my life was a wreck. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be totally honest. I was living in my boyfriend's parents' house and miserable and my life was not great. And I was not necessarily attracting those strong business leaders to my team. I wasn't necessarily killing it in any kind of a way. I was struggling, you know, and my reality Dunk. It was hard and it was rough, but I wanted out of it. And this is how I got out of it. I believed my way out of it. I taught my brain how to look for solutions. And this is how you do it through your subconscious. So you write down those things that are important to you that you want to attract, and then your brain will go to work for you instead of working against you. Um, to, you know, so this is going to build your belief. It's going to build the wolf that you want to win instead of feeding that wolf that's doubt and fear and anxiety um, and depression, things like that. So that's the, the, just the truth of it. I did not start in a good place at all, at all. So I want you guys to hear that no matter where you're starting from, you can overcome so much by teaching your brain how to work. I want you guys to know that because this is something that I run into a lot with people when I'm problem solving, when I'm doing coaching calls and things, um, because we do have all these tools, all these resources. So my question is always, why aren't you using them? Why are you putting it into action? And it always comes back to this. It always comes back to, they don't have clarity about what they want. They haven't written it down or believed it um, enough yet. So you have to start there. Yeah. Um, and, and I what, can, you know, what happened when, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jamie. Um, there's a delay. It's terrible. Um, I was just going to say, I can relate to that in the beginning too. If you knew my personal growth on this journey has been um, like very big for one. So at the beginning to say, to, to say to myself on my own with no other influence to say, oh yeah, I see the opportunity right there and I believe in myself and I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to be a diamond. Like I promise you that is not my normal and that is not what I would have said to myself and it's not what I would have believed about myself. My doubts were massive about myself. My doubts or my insecurities were massive about myself. 
Um, but hearing someone believe in me, hearing someone say, if, if you do what we do, you, you can go to the top with us. I chose to say, okay, I'm going to say yes to whatever they tell me to do. And I'm going to the top with them. And just saying that to myself and that, that helped me believe and it, it, it paved the way for my actions. Right? So even though on my own, I would not have believed in myself or bet on myself or thought I could do it. Having that and saying those words and having even that belief from somebody else come in made all the difference. Um, and I want to go into about what I know and started to talk. I don't know if you were going to talk more of this or you're going on to the next part, but she started to talk about why, what holds people back then, right? Some of you guys, if you've never heard about personal affirmations before, then this is great. Take this to heart and run with it and do some of this. A lot of you have heard about this before. And I want to tell you that please do not tune this part out. You need to listen and it doesn't matter. There's not one person on here. There's not any period of time that you've been with us here. There's not any rank that you've achieved that this does not matter or that does, this does not apply currently to you. So why don't some people value this or some people just don't do it? Um, we were talking about this a little bit before, Emily, and in terms of just kind of thinking this maybe is just fluff and it's not going to give you the, the end game right now, or it's not going to maybe get you your, your rank up this month or your join tomorrow. You want that, those action steps right now to do something. And this sometimes seems like fluff, but it is not because the truth is it's the foundation. So if this is messed up, if it's messed up right here, then it's going to 100% mess up everything else that Emily's going to go into detail for the rest of this call. It matters big. So stop yourself. Think about what you're thinking about all this that's going on right now in terms of just what we've talked about already, what you say to yourself, what you can apply, and don't be above anything of, of what this is all, you know, what we're talking about right now. Absolutely. So important and so key. I, I literally um, credit a lot of my growth to this because it was an important part of what I did when I started building my business. And it was something that I actually used and put into action before this too, um, with barrel racing and with riding horses and training and things. Um, it all, it applies to so many different aspects of life. And if, you know, when I'm coaching people, this is almost always what it comes back down to. So definitely don't miss this um, because I want you guys to be able to take action. We already, if you've been here more than a minute, like you already know what to do. So I can give you action steps all day long, but you won't take action on it until it's important in the brain. <laughs> okay. Um, so what changed when I started doing this? Um, I actually, I started posting different. Um, I showed up as a leader in my own business because I knew to attract leaders, I needed to be a leader. So that's where I went to work studying. I studied leadership and I dove right into it um, because I knew it was part of what was going to attract those leaders. Um, and it was a lot of this was subconscious. You know, once I had that goal written down, it was what do I need to do today to be a better leader? What do I need to do today to attract those leaders um, or start building on that? Um, and I, I became more disciplined too. I started making my bed. I started working out. I started doing things that matter as a leader. Um, and it, I needed to show up in that way to be able to attract those people. Um, so it literally helped me change my actions just by getting clear about those things. Um, and I started, you know, just reach, researching everything I could. I was just like voracious about finding any information that I possibly could help me become a master of this. Um, so that's how it, that's how it begins to change your actions. Um, it starts with the belief. It starts with your mindset and writing down and being clear about what you want to attract. Um, so Jamie, do you have anything to add on that? Um, nope. Go, I think go in, going into what we were talking about with looking for specific people to add and why, I think you can fly right into that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, to attracting the business builders, I had a certain specific type of thing that I was looking for. Um, and so I got clear things to add. 
that I could trust, somebody that was going to be a self-starter. Um, those are the type of characteristics I look for. And so um, when, when I'm adding friends on Facebook, when I am um, thinking about who I want to reach out to or who I want to connect with online somehow, that's what I'm going to be looking for. So I'll go to people's profiles and I won't just add anybody and everybody because I'm almost um, treating this like a job interview. Like I, I don't wanna hire just anybody and everybody. Um, I want to find people that I wanna work with and that wanna work with me. Um, and so I will go on a search for that type of a person and I'll be really intentional about who I'm adding on Facebook, um, who, you know, who I'm engaging with on Facebook, you know, things like that. And write, um, and I think um, write those things down, you know, think of those lists of qualities of whether it's, you know, someone that you're going to mesh with, you know, maybe you share certain, you know, um, interests, things like that, or specific qualities that you want to find in leaders. Like, what do you want in someone who's underneath, you know, who's working with you um, in terms of leadership or that they, you know, love people or they have influence or they, you know, what is it that you're looking for and write it down. And it's, and like, just kind of whole, the whole thing with the affirmations, if you see that and you're, you're, you're going to go into action looking for those people. So write, write those things down. Um, Emily, then what do you do next after you, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of connect or add some people like that? Yeah, so when it comes to um, my cold market and I'm trying to connect with new people, um, that's when I will send them a message right away. So if they've added me on Facebook or I've added them on Facebook, I'm going to send them a message right away and just say, hey, nice to meet you. I don't think we've met in person, but it's great to see you on here. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know you. And I'll keep it that simple and that short. And I won't talk about anything Plexus related. Um, or really go into anything else unless it comes up in conversation where they maybe we start talking and they ask what do I do for a living so then for sure that's my segue into talking about it but that first message is just going to be um, hey nice to meet you basically <laughs> and so um, that's what I do for adding new friends and then what I do um, with that is I take the link to their profile. So you can copy and paste the link to their specific profile and I add them to my hot list and I have a running list of people with their names and then with a link next to their name that I can specifically engage with on, online every single day. Um, so I'll start, start off with that list of names and my next step is posting, of course. We all have to post stuff so before and after i post something for about 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after i post something i'll go to my hot list click on those names and comment on some of their stuff um, maybe i'll just send them a message quick uh, you know if we haven't talked in a little while or something i'll send them a message and say something reminded me of them if it did or um, just find a genuine way to reach out to them um, and the reason why i do it that way is because it boosts your engagement big time if you will do um, 15 minutes before and after you post something or if you go live or do something like that. Same, same rules apply, helps your engagement, helps them see your posts, helps you see theirs um, so that you're connecting there. Um, and then, you know, after that, <laughs> um, after that, I'm basically just continuing to build that relationship. And a lot of times this just kind of comes along naturally and a lot of times after about a month or two of being Facebook friends with somebody and me seeing their posts them seeing my posts they'll reach out to me and be like what are you doing <laughs> you know what's what's this plexus thing or they saw a product testimonial that they um, relate to and so they'll reach out to me and ask what I'm doing you know and from there I'm simply going to use the send share invite system so use the tools videos, testimonies, things like that, to move the conversation forward and ask them lots of questions. So if they're asking me about the business, I'm gonna be asking about why are they interested? What um, appeals to you about this? You know, what are your financial goals? Um, I'm asking those types of questions because it's the same as if you were recruiting for the products, you're just switching things around and using the send share invite system to recruit people for the business. That is so good. So basically what you're doing from that is instead of having these new people 
you know, a lot of times you hear like, oh, well, I, I'm through my warm market. I've, I've talked to people that I know. Now it's just like a lot of people I don't know. So those are harder people to recruit. Again, what we're telling ourselves, right? And essentially by doing these things, and, and Emily's going to talk about posting in a second here, which also connects to this, um, you're turning that cold market into a warm market, right? Because you're connecting with them on their posts. You're having conversations. Um, when, as we're talking about this in a little bit, when we're posting, they're getting to know you. So instead of this being a cold person that you have no relationship with and they don't feel like they know you, now you've had some engagements on posts maybe. You, they know you from your posting, different things like that, and you're turning that around. So that is huge. A thing that I like to also do when messaging people about, you know, when, when you're talking about the business and things like that, um, telling them what you see in them, I think can go a long way and be huge. So if they're, whether they're interested in it and they're coming to you or whether you're going to them and, and presenting this opportunity to them, tell them, I mean, for one, excitement is contagious, right? You have to be excited. That goes back to your belief, your vision, all that kind of stuff. So that has to be there. And then and then tell them why they would be great at this. You know, do they have um, influence? Are they just fun to be around? Do they have a great social media presence? Do people trust them? Do they seem genuinely compassionate and um, caring for others? Whatever it is, tell them specific qualities of what you see in them and, and, and have it be from a genuine place. Don't just fluff somebody just to do it for no reason. You know, like be genuine about it. And, and tell them that. That makes a world of a difference, what you can see in them to bring that out of them for why this, this could be beneficial toward them or for them. Um, but please know as, as you're doing these things and you know attraction marketing and you know the posting that's gonna come in a second here, um, what Emily said with that first message and, and talking back and forth on, on their posts and stuff, Sure, people might come to you but in a month or two, but that does not mean you stop ever reaching out and you wait for everybody to come to you from now on. That is not where this is going at all. 100% is very important to be doing your new contacts and to, reaching out, to be reaching out about Plexus to people. So as you're still doing that with your IPA, you can also work on this in terms of what we've been talking about and what Emily's gonna continue to share about with your posting. It matters, it's gonna make a difference, but you have to do both. You can't put one on hold to work on something else and just expect everyone to come to you tomorrow, okay? So we have to keep doing this and working on ourselves through this. So yeah, can you talk more about posting, um, Emily, and that whole part? Yeah, for sure. So posting is really just a way to connect and build trust with your audience. Um, that's how you get new people into your market. You have to have their trust. You have to be connected with them. Um, and so you can become a trustworthy person to them, but simply by showing up every day. So you're going to show up in their news feed every day with two personal and one Plexus post. Um, and then you build trust by being authentic and being genuine to yourself and by being vulnerable, you know, that's how now I'm getting strangers reaching out to me and uh, messaging me and stuff, but it's because they don't feel like a stranger to me. I share so much online and I share my story and I speak vulnerably whenever I can, and that helps them to feel like they already know me before we've even met in person or even had too many conversations online. So that's building the trust and then connecting with them um, over common interests. So this is just an easy way to connect with new people. Um, posting about things that you're passionate about is important. So um, if you can find a few things that you super enjoy doing, that you love to read about, study about and things, then you can post about what you're learning and educate people. You can entertain people if you're like a goofy personality and you like to share funny stuff or funny stories or whatever, and that's your thing. Um, that's great too. You just have to find your lane, what you love to talk about, what you love to connect with people about and post about those things. Um, so I, I try to fit it into a couple categories, either educate, entertain, or inspire people. Um, and you know, for me, it's horses are a big part of my life. And so I post about horses a lot. 
um, but also I'm diving into finance and getting out of debt and things like that that are important to me too. So you'll see, you'll see me posting about those things. And then when it comes to Plexus, you'll probably see me posting about the business maybe two times for every one time I talk about the products because I'm passionate about that aspect of things too. Um, so what you're posting is going to help attract the kind of people that you're going to be working with. So if you're only ever posting about the products, you're going to recruit a lot of product users. Um, and if you're only posting about your dog every day, you know, you're probably going to attract people that love dogs also. So it's just a matter of finding your lane and finding what you love to be, you know, passionate about and you can easily talk about and being consistent with that. Good. And if you were to give just a couple quick tips on like just over the course of a minute or so on storytelling, I know you've done even a call on this before, but a part of that, you know, you've talked about and you do really great with storytelling in your posting. It's not just, oh, it's not just copy and paste. It's not just something quick to put up because you did a post super fast and you need to get your post in for the day. Um, what would be your quick tips on storytelling? Um, I think that storytelling just comes from reflection. So if you can start to be more reflective and think about, like, think about things that happened to you, things that mattered to you, a, a season in life that was super hard or a season in life where you were doing awesome, think about those things a lot and give yourself space and energy to be able to um, just kind of mull over those things and then start telling the story in the middle of the story um, you know, in kind of that first line or two, make it something that just grabs somebody's attention. You know, like I did a post, something came up 15 times, period. And then there's some spaces. <laughs> and then it said, that's the number of times I've moved in the last um, 10 years. And so that, you know, things like that, where you just put a simple like one liner that kind of grabs their attention and starts the story off. And then you can go into the story and, you know, start telling it from a place where there's some emotion. So whenever you evoke emotion in people and they, they feel what you're going through, um, you can really, really connect with people in that way. Um, another tip for storytelling is um, just simple, like on Facebook, what you use some spaces in between your sentences. So like write two sentences and then make some spaces, write another couple sentences, make some spaces, because you want it to come across like you are sitting face to face with this person and telling them your story and there's a pause. And then you start talking again <laughs> and there's a pause and it breaks it up enough to where people wanna keep reading and they, they can um, connect with your story better and they won't just see this big long paragraph and be overwhelmed by it and scroll by. So they'll see a couple of sentences scroll down a couple of sentences, scroll down, you know, so that's what I, that's what I do with my posts as far as like just tangible little tools for that. Mm -hmm. Good. And I think just finding, finding your niche, your, you know, like what, like you said, you know, think of the things that you're passionate about, that you're excited about, um, that you want to learn about. If you're excited about something and want to learn about something, somebody else out there wants to too. So do that together. When you're storytelling, you're, um, it's like you're talking to someone in front of you, right? It doesn't have to be the perfect words. It doesn't have to be like you're an expert at something before you do it. You just like you're talking to somebody in front of you. Um, if you don't know what to say, then you might not be doing something right. You might not be doing your personal growth. You might not be doing self-reflection. You might not have quiet time to your, to your day and be actually intentionally thinking about it. So I find, and this is from personal experience, I find when I, if I don't know what to say, because I'm not an expert in this. I am not like, I am not perfect. I'm not an expert this by any means um, on, on, on some of this stuff. And even, you know, if I find like, I don't know what to say, you know, in any other area of life too, like what's, why is that? Well, 
you know, maybe I haven't been doing my, like reading personal growth. Maybe, you know, who have I been talking to? Who am I? I, I get inspiration. And in when I'm talking, you know, coaching calls with my upline, my downline, um, watching videos, having that time to self-reflect, you know, in your Bible, the things like that. If you're doing these things and you're intentional about what you're feeding yourself, your mind, then you're going to have stuff to share out, right? We can't pour from an empty cup. So maybe our cup is empty if we don't know what to say. So feed yourself so that you can in turn, you know, feed others. If you, if you don't know what you're passionate about, maybe think about what would, it, like Emily said, what would excite you? Um, what's something you can learn about that you can share as you learn, you know? Um, so that's something just from experience when I don't know what to say, usually I can turn that back around and I can point that finger at me. That's, that's me. That's me not being intentional. So. Very true. You can't pour from an empty cup. And so it's very important to be able to um, spend some time and some energy and effort in growing a hobby or growing in something that you're interested in so that you're constantly being fed information that you can share with other people. Um, that's a great way to connect with people um, with that. Um, and I just, since it's 8.33, we gotta wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to encourage you guys, attraction marketing can sound um, really appealing, especially when you're first starting out, because it's like, oh yeah, I wanna have people coming to me, that would be awesome. That's how I wanted it to happen too, but I'll be totally honest, the first probably six months of my business, I really didn't have any of this happening. Um, and I would tell you my, my market is warmer now than it was when I even first started because um, when I first started, I had to be the one reaching out to people and I did a lot of it. I reached out to a lot, a lot of people. And so it's not something that happens overnight. You can't just become an attraction marketer right overnight. It's something that you're gonna start working on today and then see the results from this three months, six months, a year from now. Um, so what you do today matters, but don't expect results right away tomorrow, <laughs> okay? So that's the thing I wanna get through to you is write down who you're looking for, who you want to attract to your business, get clear about that, get clear about the kind of business that you want to have, um, and then let your brain go to work for you, you know, believing in those things and looking for those things and then start putting some of these things into action. There is literally hundreds and hundreds of things that you can watch on attraction marketing to become a master at it. Um, so just get your mind right first and then use those tools to be able to make it happen. And I don't think Emily shared this on this call, but she said in the post for it, Jamie, anything you know, to add? Percent of people she talks to comes to her now. And so, but take that to heart what she said. That doesn't mean you pause and wait for people to come. Like this is a tool and something you can use and grow. So my tip with that is don't get caught in the comparison game. Don't look at Emily and think you have to do exactly what she's doing on social media. Follow her, she's awesome. But you don't have, you don't have to be an Emily. You don't have to be a fill in the blank, whoever you're gonna put in there. Um, you have to be you, right? You are the only you and that's what you have to find in terms of what you're going to do and you can't compare somebody's day 598 to your day one right so you can't get to day 598 without starting at your day one either okay so it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be all the things you're going to learn as you grow just like with everything else but you just start by putting one foot in front of the other and you start with taking action. So take action on your mind, take action on the steps that you can be intentional about daily and just learn as you go. So thank you, Emily, for all these amazing tips. And thank you guys for tuning in. And unless you have anything else, Em, you all have a good night. Have a good night, guys. <laughs>